What's up, Thrallers? Miller. McCrock, Nick. Jim and John. And another album review for you. This time, Telekinetic Yeti with their release Primordial. This is their second release, this duo from Iowa formed in 2015. And this is just a stoner, doomy goodness. Pretty much, if you love riffs and the sound of orange amps, mm -hmm. Black Sabbath and... Black Sabbath, <laughs> and a lot of other bands that sound like Black Sabbath. This is exactly what it is. I mean, what would you expect from a band called Telekinetic Yeti? Like, I mean, at, I would expect, pretty, yeah. you gotta be pretty good. With if you're looking at the album cover right now, this looks like it should be airbrushed in an Econoline van that has smoke <laughs> pouring out of every fucking window. Cigarettes, though. That's it's not what you think. I've been is. in a van like that with cigarettes. 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 I was not smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, they can't know. Now, I had actually heard of this band, but I had never actually jammed their first album, which, from what I hear, is absolutely awesome, too. There seems to be, like, a big buzz about this band. You know, two-man bands are kind of interesting, and, mm -hmm. man, as soon as we crank this thing, and, man, I don't think we really need to, because, Jesus Christ, this guitar tone... What I love about Stoner Doom is they find this happy medium in terms of like the stoner metal fuzziness, like that Fu Manchu sort of fuzz, mm -hmm. and just a crunchy, mm -hmm. gnarly tone. And this tone just assaults you right out of the gate. Giant, sludgy, doomy, stony riffs. This production is very analog, it's very warm, it's very inviting. Like, sure, get in the van. We Come have in. cigarettes. We have plenty <laughs> of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Bauman does a fantastic job with the tone. The way he chooses where he goes with some of these riffs, it's not what you would expect. Like, you kind of know that it's going to go heavy. Oh, yeah. Well, you know it's going to go, but it goes fucking heavy, man. It, fantastic job. There's such melodic, catchy, hooky riffs mm -hmm. all over this, oh, but yeah. one thing that they hold true to the entire time is that behind every riff is just a drone yeah and that drone it just hits so hard it makes mm -hmm. it fills up a lot of room considering it's only a two-piece band like there's a lot of noise but it's it's good what i like about the riffs is i mean all right it's very rooted in a very particular sound you know namely again like black sabbath saint vitus trouble you know and think of any stoner doom band like monolord monolord loves to drone but what this guy does in terms of like sort of seizing it a little bit like he throws on these cool little tags at the end these fun little crawls like mm -hmm. a little bluesy inflection here and i don't know it just kind of makes the riffs like a little bit more fun and for something that is doom adjacent like this is stoner doom i was kind of smiling pretty much throughout mm -hmm. all of this like this is just yeah. a fucking fun album very like, very fun listen boogies and just grooves and like dude this is just nice yeah nick's not a dancer but he i'm not a dancer <laughs> but I, I shook my ass for just a little bit i know i did we're gonna I feed nick it. some cigarettes in a van <laughs> see what happens yeah but they do a really good job of getting that groove in those southern style licks very oh. reminiscent of bands or, or players like kirk pepper you know, bands like that, that southern style of playing, that groove, that grunge, but this is unique to this band, really, the style of guitar playing. Because uh, I noticed there's a lot of whammy wah usage on here, which is cool, and he's got to have a Floyd Rose. Like, I immediately heard the Orange Amps, because <laughs> even in the first song I just wrote, I, I fucking love Orange Amps. Dude, it, it's but, such a giant, warm sound. Like, that yeah. is, like, if you're a stoner metal band, you have orange amps. I'm reasonably sure of it. If you don't, are you really a stoner band? Like, I don't know. Like, it, it's a particular sound. And again, those those wah effects, that sort of spaciness, the trippiness, like it mm -hmm. kind of goes into like desert rock territory occasionally. And I know there, there's an atmosphere and a whole vibe about this, but the cool thing is like the fluctuating energy. Like mm -hmm. this is paced really well. Like it can go from like, you know, standard like mid-tempo grooves, big chunky riffs, and then slow it down to a crawl like the end of Ancient, Ancient Nug. Nug. Yeah. Has this nice up-tempo section. Like, all right, we're fucking rocking. We hit, like, at least 75 on the fucking open freeway. Boom, we hit the nice. city limits in a doom town, and we slow the fuck down to a crawl, and Jesus it's Christ. crazy. And that's this part where, in particular, where you know it's going heavy. 
but it just goes like a whole nother level oh. heavy and you're just like oh god that's like, and the yeah. transition's so fucking beautiful mm -hmm. like you only get like a split second to sense the slowdown coming but it just fucking hits and like i said you like you feel like you could stay in this up tempo section for a second you know like it's it's gonna be there for a bit mm -hmm. and then boom the brakes hit but it's not sloppy it's not knee jerk it's just like that's exactly what the song needed. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. Now, initially, we thought that this band didn't have any vocals to it, and then we were wrong. Um, that happens. <laughs> and then we're wrong. The vocals, I think, are like an even kiltered mixture of like Troy Sanders meets Ozzy Osbourne meets mm -hmm. uh, whoever the dude is from the Sword. Uh, yeah, actually, I heard yep. a little bit of the Sword too. Yep. Uh, but the vocals aren't really like prevalent throughout the album too. They're peppered in in little spots. Like the guy can definitely sing, and there are a couple instances where he there's a, a a cool chorus or something. But for the most part, they stick with music. Yeah, and riffs. And I think there are some flat out instrumental tracks on here mm -hmm. too. But yeah. again, like sometimes the vocals are so spaced out. Like you might get like a verse, a long fucking bridge, and mm -hmm. then like a chorus hook, and then. Another long fucking, you know, little take the riff for a walk, let it go outside and pee. Oh, you're not done, you have to poop. Takes its time, and I I love that. Like, just let every riff on here take a little bit of a walk because mm -hmm. they're so fucking good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As far as production is concerned, normally I have gripes about Stoner Doom and, and it being too muddy or fuzzy or whatnot, but this is like, again, the guitars are very crunchy yet hefty as all get out. This guy's got to be using some really big cymbals. There's not a whole lot by way of drum work, but it's very bouncy and, and the, the kick drums hit really well and that snare's got kind of a pop to it but it's the typical like stoner kind of thwack i think it sounds great yeah, i actually don't have any production gripes to be honest no. <laughs> it's got that rich analog sound and mm -hmm. with all the mm -hmm. reverb on the guitars mm -hmm. i mean it has this concert hall fucking vibe like i want to see this mm -hmm. live but i might have to wear earplugs yeah and he uses the uh octave setting on that whammy wah he doesn't overdo it in the beginning a little bit but um he, he tones down in the second half of the album but he does it, it really well i think mm -hmm. this is the beach lane ballroom would be kind of sweet oh yeah i mean that's that's an old fucking venue and yep. this is kind of an old sound i mean mm -hmm. it, it would fit and it would fill out the sound like you would hear that three blocks away now you'd think for a stoner doom band that the, they'd be pretty lengthy songs but they're really not most of the songs are between like four and five minutes there are some cool atmospheric things in the song stoned ape theory this is where it gets like really stony like i would call this like an indica heavy kind of zoned out uh vibe it's got some almost like primacy moments in the atmosphere just kind of like whimsical little things he does with the guitar and um uh, yeah, they love to stick with that drone. I Shit. love how that song opens too. Mm -hmm. These really crawling, kind of like mastodon ASG. Like an immediate hook. Yeah. Just right there, boom, here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're really good. Like, in terms of like starting off the songs, like, they greet you to like a cool dynamic or a cool hook right away. Cause I think the whole thing is like, they don't want to like, you know, take too long letting you get settled in. Like, again, these are shorter songs. It's condensed. They want to make sure you are fucking wrote immediately and they do a great fucking mm -hmm. job and i kind of like that they're a little shorter in terms of the style or genre that they're associated with because it's it's just concise and it's to the point and it makes for a, a much more enjoyable listen and the song toke wizard like that song if that doesn't make you want to become a toke wizard i don't know <laughs> I don't know what will. I'm a toke wizard. Gandalf, except the staff is a giant bong. <laughs> <laughs> you shall not pass that back to me. That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> Pippin, Mary, stop bogarting the bong. <laughs> that song, I love how it opens. Like, it's one of the few that opens up kind of clean. Like, you get to hear, like, this cool, clean delay effect. And, again, you get that sort of cosmic sort of trippiness. Yeah, very chill. And I love that this can shift around from like sort of like chill, sort of trippy desert rock moments, to just flat out bruising songs. Oh, like, yeah. dude, invention of fire. Yes. Dude, they break down the rip and sell, letting it drone out. Like it's just this big prominent chug. And mm -hmm. honestly, like it kind of reminded me of like early Queens of the Stone Age, except I said a that. fuck yeah. ton heavier. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. It, it has like a solid mm -hmm. rock sort of like just 
hook to it. Yeah, that gallop is like intense. Oh. It, it fits perfectly in that song. And I love how they they stick with the like the the intro groove is this off time chuggy thing, mm -hmm. and they don't ever really abandon it. Like yeah. when it when it goes a little bit faster, they switch to another riff, but ultimately it goes back to this nasty off time groove. Yeah, which yeah. goes to the this band and and what I think of them as being awesome is they they really are not afraid to take an idea and really explore it in every aspect and it all fits in this. And that's like the fun thing about like Stoner Doom, like you know, like it, it is it's riff based, and you know it's kind of up to you, like all right, we have the root riff, right? Let's see what we can do with this. Let's spice up. Let's take it yep. for a weird walk. Let's throw like a. An interesting groove on top of it because this is kind of all about feel and just like sort of a vibe and to melody it. there's so oh. much melody in here and honestly as far as negatives like i don't really have many at all like the only thing i'd say was something i would agree with uh jam john about we talked about there are some giant doom laden breakdowns like pure stank mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. doomage <laughs> But man, I really wish they would hang out a little bit longer. Yeah, like they easily, like on the end of Invention of Fire, Ugh. on the end of uh, yeah. Beast, on the end of Toke Wizard. Like, do look, they could easily dry hump these riffs for a couple minutes and it would have been epic. Not that the songs weren't great and pretty epic to begin with, but man, come on. Come on. But if your only complaint is you wanted more of a good thing, I mean, it's one of those like, ah, it's like, is it really a complaint? Like, I'm just saying, yeah, do yeah, more of the cool thing yeah, that yeah. I liked. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't call it a complaint whatsoever, but like... But you are. Man, but I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not. He said it's a complaint. I'm, I'm not. It's not a complaint. It just could have been longer, but they were fucking titties. Yeah. Anyway. And I mean, it never really gets like that oppressive, doomy feel, but that isn't a complaint either because this is just fun. This is mm -hmm. just flat out fun mm -hmm. to listen to. Like, I want to listen to it again right now just because, yep. like, dude, those riffs yep. are so good. And I'm going to go with a four and a half out of five. That's how much I enjoyed this album. I really dug it. It was constructed well. It took every idea of a riff and, and humped it and changed when it needed to. And... You know, some of them could have been drawn out a little bit more, but I think they were good. They didn't, they didn't cut anything down super short, like one little bar or anything like that. So it makes you want to revisit those songs because they give you enough of it and they make you full. I'm full after this album. I'm content, but I want to go back for more. I need 20 minutes. It's high calorie. You got to give me 20 minutes, sweetie. <laughs> hey, get on the elliptical. But man. in 20 minutes, man, I'm going back to this. Doesn't thing. just reload. Mm -hmm. Dude, there you were there was a lot of gravy all over those mm -hmm. fucking wrists, man. Mm -hmm. You can't go back for seconds. Just soaking. Well, I'm gonna go back for seconds. I'm gonna go. I want to go ahead and give this four. This is a fucking awesome album this is my first legit experience with these guys like i've heard this band in terms of like recommendations for stoner doom I was like oh, i'll get to it and then i didn't and now i'm here and it's like well i'm gonna get both albums because holy fuck i just love it it's it's mm -hmm. riff city it's very hooky very melodic i like the fact that the vocals are sort of spaced out and they are just willing to take just a cool riff and let it walk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but still doing that within like you know again a more condensed structure like again you don't have like long 10 minute or 15 minute songs in here they do pretty much everything that i like about soda doom and keep it fucking tight and it just sounds amazing the production's fucking flawless Go get this. If you love Stone or Doom, uh, there's a tremendous amount of hype around this band for a reason. This band is fucking awesome, and uh, I recommend this one. We're listening to the first one right now behind us, and like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fucking buy that. Sorry, it's, AI, we're not. No, we're not. No, yeah, we're, we're not, not listening. Yeah, no, we're, we're listening to... We don't listen to music, uh, guys. Just, we don't listen to music. All public domain music. Yeah, radio John, station. John, farting into the just microphone. Yeah, <laughs> yep. farted. Yep. It's white noise. Yep. Brown noise. Right under the brown snare. Noise. <laughs> He's a brown noise generator. Yep. But yeah, this is absolutely incredible. Go out and get this. Uh, Jam and John. Yep. I'm going to give it a four, too. I fucking loved it, man. The, all the, the tropes about Stoner Doom are all here. And I it's really neat because each and every song has a hook to it. And there's just immediate earworms that kind of embed themselves in your brain. Riffs are creative. The it, It's all like really simplistic, but very well put together. There aren't really any like downtime moments where I'm like, well, this fuck sucks. Like, no, dude, the whole record was pretty killer. Production was great. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I yep. can't dance either, but I did spend a lot of time <laughs> going like this because it's a great time. It's a rhythmic shimmy. Um, that and like, 
just oh dude when it's when it's melodic it's melodic when it's up tempo it's fun when it's sludgy though it It just brings the hammer down Yep. yep yep Good times, good listen. Like Nick said, there's a lot of hype around this band and a very good fucking reason. Uh, it's the first time I'd ever heard them, but man, dude. We're fans now. Killer. We're fans. <laughs> we like you. Good job. Yes, excellent job. And if you thought we did a good job, give it a thumbs up and hit that uh, subscribe button. It helps us out. Also, down below, there is a link to our Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, just click that. We are going to get together here soon and do our response video to all our fun questions, and we look forward to, well, answering some of those really weird ones. So thank you for those. Yeah. Thrallsofmetal.com. You can go there and get a T-shirt. It should be at thrallsofmetal.com. Well, I don't have any cool vocal sound effects like that. I can say that pretty soon we are starting to announce bands for the Denver Death Fest. Taking place, of course, in Denver, Colorado. Not, Iowa. Not Denver, Iowa. Canada. Canada, but Denver. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Japan, Denver. Narnia. That's not where we are. Funny, uh, it is in Narnia, too. It's oh, the same it time. Well, we brought in the door. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so technically, nice. All right, that's there. good. Denver Death Fest, uh, September 30th, October 1st, and October 2nd. We are in the process of, uh, looks like, finalizing the band lineup here. The last I checked, I think we had 17 confirmed bands. We're going to be announcing very soon, and we're talking within days here, uh, the beginnings of that lineup, which is pretty fucking sick. So if you want to go to that one, you should go to that one. It's going to be pretty neat. In Narnia. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, liking, subscribing, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You guys keep us going, and we love doing this shit. This has been a fun ride so far, and I think it's going to get more fun. I don't know. Hypothetically, it could get more fun. Cool. So with that, once again, thank you all, and we will catch you later.